All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rebeer. I hope you're all well. Finally, finally, I can talk and show you guys this amazing, amazing new beast of an amplifier that myself and Martin Kidd have been working on for quite a while. I am so proud and like unbelievably excited to introduce to you a brand new Victory VX100 Super Kraken amplifier. So I needed to make a tune suitably brutal uh, to show you guys how unbelievably hench this amplifier can sound. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that intro tune. Um, but where do I begin? I guess I should start by showing you where we began, which is this. This is the VX, uh, Victory VX. This is the Kraken. This is my, my little baby. It's amazing, I'm amazingly proud of this amp and it's done so much for me as a musician and as a guitarist. Um, basically, Victory asked me a couple of years ago to get involved with a high gain sort of metal amplifier as it were for the Victory range and this is what we came up with. You know the story, I worked really closely with Martin Kidd and we, um, we were inspired by a couple of amps that I'd personally been using in a stereo rig. There was a 5150 Mark I and a JCM 900. Um, that we took for inspiration and then we modded them and just changed them to sound a bit more unique and more like what Martin would do and what I personally appreciated in a tone of a high gain amplifier. So that's how this came about and it's been amazingly successful for Victory. Um, I'm super honoured to be part of it and everyone that's got one is enjoying it. Um, so what's VX100? Well obviously it's, it's 100 watts by the name but we didn't just want to make 
a louder version of this, I wanted to sort of not necessarily improve on things, but elaborate on different things and try and get something a bit different. So what we're looking at here, as you can see on the close-up camera, the front view of the amplifier, the front panel, is kind of similar, but I'll, sh I'll talk you through the additions to the VX100. So for a start, we've got Game 1, Game 2. They are exactly the same as Game 1, Game 2 on the Kraken, but we've now added a clean channel, which quite a lot of people asked about, and I wanted to see you know, how that would work. Martin told me that the difference between Game 1 and 2 was half a preamp tube, which blew my mind in terms of how different it sounded. But in terms of to clean up, because I use game one as like a clean, push clean, uh, to crunch. So I asked Martin, if we took another preamp, half a preamp tube out of game one, would it clean up? And sure enough, it did. So game one is, the clean channel is based off game one minus half a preamp tube, which is what we get to our sort of clean tones. So it's got a beautiful, chimey, awesome clean tone in there. Then you've got Game 1, you've got Game 2, you've got two masters, an effects loop, your bass focus, all the same as VX. Um, but then something else we added um, through a conversation I had with Adam Nolly, Get Good, who I'm sure you know, uh, he's, a, he's a dude, and he was talking about how he'd not seen many people do uh, like, a, like a Tube Screamer style, style boost within a, an amplifier. Um, so I asked Martin if that was something that we could maybe look at and start you know, trying to incorporate in. And so what we've done is we haven't taken a Tube Screamer circuit. Martin's basically added like a mid-kick kind of boost to the front end of the amplifier that kind of, kind of emulates that Tube Screamer sound. But to be honest, what it does is turn the amplifier from already being a high gain growly beast into just other world, like just, oh, it's so fierce, but also it can do uh, nice lead tones and you can do push cleans with it with a strat and get bluesy tones it's just this amp's gone from being a tonal beast as it were now to just unstoppable in my opinion it's it for me it's what defines a modern hard rock metal amp with all the classic tones that you wanted involved in it as well so we've got a preamp focus now we have the bass focus which is a power amp negative feedback loop focus which pulls in and out the low end depending on what you want and now we've got a preamp focus which turns, uh, which basically acts like a mid boost into the front end, which is something quite common used in modern metal and progressive metal. People use tube screamers to do just that, tighten up the low end, and push the mid range out. And then, so we were pretty much done with the amplifier at NAM 2018. And one of the last things that happened was I just decided that it wasn't going to work for people unless it was MIDI functional. Where mainly, it wasn't going to work for me personally uh, if it didn't have MIDI programmable uh, features in it. Because I use a gig rig, many people use Boss CS8, CS5s, gig rigs, all sorts of stuff like that. And it would be really awesome if you could program your patches for the amp with all your pedals on your effect on your pedal board. Because I use my gig rig to control my Strymons, but I also want it to control the amp. So the idea being that you can program each channel and each sound and involve your amplifier within that. So Martin had to go away and learn a completely new language to him, which was MIDI. He's never put MIDI in an amp until now. And I'm proud to say that it's the first victory amp with MIDI. And going forward, I imagine there'll be other MIDI programmable amplifiers coming out. But this, it's just it's just tipped it over the edge into just what how good the amp could be. So you can use this um, program in your delay and reverb specifically for a clean sound and then jump over to something like a high gain with the boost and have a different delay and clean uh, reverb. It's just endless. That's more or less the amplifier. You've got all your same sort of speaker outs, 4, 8, 16 ohms. Um, you've got foot switches. There are three foot switch ins on the back of this amp. I'll do a close up of the back panel. Uh, they control everything from your channel, your preamp focus, your masters and your effects loops if you don't want to go down the MIDI route. Uh, but what else is it to say? I guess, you know, that's it. You've got high and a low power, so you, doesn't have to, you don't have to run it at 100 watts, but I would recommend it because it's just ferocious. Um, and I guess lastly, I'll just go over my signal chain because I use two Krakens in Tosca, and generally I use two Krakens. I also have two VX100s. So what you're looking at is a VX100 that's going into the Universal Audio Oxbox. Um, I'm going to do that for some cleans and some crunches. And then behind me, I've got another VX100 sat and rigged up to the torpedo for the high gain stuff, um, just to give you a bit of variation. 
and I'll be using two in Tosca, um, which I can't wait to try out. I think Dave and Ben will kill me for the volume, but it's just going to open up my tonal world to no end. So anyway, let's get into it. To start with, I've got a couple of different guitars. I've got my baritone for the filth, I've got my Fender Strat 50s uh, custom shot, and I've got a Music Man JP15 because it's got piezo in it and stuff like that. So we'll start with the clean tones. This is the Fender straight in to the front end. Everything's at halfway. Uh, and this is the kind of sound you'll get with low output pickups. These are 50s hand wound, so it's very low output vintage pickups. So here we go. Um, if you put this through a cabinet, the amount of low end and support you'd get is insane. I, I don't know how well it's going to translate. Clean tones are always really hard to translate with load boxes and things like that. Um, so I urge you to try one in the room, but it sounds really nice to me in the room. I'm going to boost the gain to three quarters so you can hear what happens. <laughs> So maybe with lower output um, pickups, you might want to use more gain. Um, but nevertheless, you've also got the preamp focus, which is going to give us like a bluesy push. You'll hear the mid-range change. So here we go. Gain back at halfway, preamp focus. Now if we push the gain up, let's just drop off the volume a bit. Thank you. 
So, as you heard, it becomes like a creamy, kind of mid-boosted clean sound, and it breaks up just a little bit. You put this through a cabinet, it's something else. Seriously, you, you, honestly, it's something else. It really does just give you so much more oomph, and like you can dig in and get the bluesy bite. I mean, I wish I could mic up a cab in this room to show you what I mean, but you know, with, with load boxes, it's the best thing I can show you. If you come see Tosca live, you'll get to hear it. Uh, right, so next, what I want to do is go over to the actually just before I do that I'm going to crank the gain all the way to full and give you some Again, this is just the amp that you can get on a clean channel. And what I like is that you can really drive it. Now you put a clone in front of that and then you've got dirty blues for days. You could put a compressor in front of that and really bring out more of that gain. Um, but just straight from the amp, it's just killer. Next, we're gonna do crunch. I've dropped the gain down to about 10 o'clock. Uh, let's have a little listen. So as you can hear, it's a really vocal crunch at low gain, but the more you turn it up, you've got just more gain. And the best bit is you've still got the preamp focus to really push it over the edge. So I'm not gonna touch the gain, but if I throw in the preamp focus, Suddenly it warms up, it's a bit creamier, and you've got a bit more gain, more sustain. Um, so that you can have on a foot switch, or you can even program that in with MIDI. So yeah, sounds sick. So we're still on the crunch, and before I change guitar, because I'm just going to run over the clean with something like the JP with humbuckers, the piezo and all that. So I just want to give you a bit more crunch before this guitar becomes a little bit hard to control with the gain. But even then, with the crunch at 12... <laughs> Oh, it's so nice. Throw in the preamp. <laughs> 
That thickness. Sounds absolutely insane. So just boost the gain. Very nice. It's just, I think, uh, maybe I'm used to it because it's the Kraken, but it's immediately just easy to play. It feels so good. I might be biased, but it feels really good to play. Anyway, it's not really, it's not really a review. I'm demonstrating this for you guys. I'm just showing you the tones and you can make up your own mind. Preamp focus, gain halfway. getting carried away um, and then um, the controls I just like to, to pull off a bit of bass but other than that right, let's boost the gain to three quarters take off the preamp focus Turn the bass focus, uh, preamp focus. I'm just messing about. Um, I don't know how much of this John's going to keep in the video, but I am literally just messing around because it just sounds so good. That's such a great strap tone, so thick. <laughs> oh, so anyway, there you go. That is the clean and the crunch with something like a strat. Those are the realm of possibilities you can get with a strat. I could put it on gain two, but it will be really intense. He 
get the idea. There's tons and tons of gain in this amp, and I haven't even got started on the heavy stuff. This is literally just an additional benefit of getting this amplifier if you like strap bluesy tones and cleans. Um, right, I'm just going to grab the JP15, show you some cleans with the humbuckers and the piezo, and then we'll move on to the filthy heavy goodness. Okay, so I've got my JP15 middle position uh, with a bit of piezo rolled in. Check this out. This is the clean channel. So it can do the chimey clean thing um, really, really well. Um, that without the piezo, sound like that. Humbucker, a bit less gain. So if we keep the game where it is, put the preamp focus in. Oh, it's just it's just beautiful. It really is. It's so vocal. Um, for me personally, I just I'm able to get the most of my playing out with this. It just lets me play the way I want to play. It's great. Okay, well we may as well stay with this guitar for the crunch. Um, again, I'm gonna go to gain one. Um, no preamp focus in. Take the gain to ten o'clock and give you some crunch. Gain one. Sounds really thick, it's really good with humbuckers. Um, so let's boost the gain. I'm going to boost it to about one o'clock.
Ugh, it's thick, creamy. And just to say at this point... <laughs> So it's a good area for gain. It's nice and thick. If we throw in the preamp focus on this. killer hard rock tones it's a thick juicy sort of british style overdrive and we, we, we still haven't even touched the high gain gain two um you know what i love is there's just such a such a, a wide trying to find the words here the, a wide range of tones from super super clean all the way through to bluesy spanky blues and then through to crunch and thick crunch and then high gain it's just we're not even done yet but i'm just loving this amp okay let's put a bit more gain in <laughs> Preamp focus. Gain one, it's a different type of high gain. You've got that thickness from the crunch. <laughs> which is less defined with the less uh, half a preamp tube for gain two, but then when you throw the preamp focus in, it's a thick. I could just keep doing those chords all day, but yeah, you get the idea. Ridiculous. So lastly, before we move on to uh, the torpedo with the baritone, I'm going to give you uh, gain two. So this is just gain two, gain at halfway. <laughs> focus it screams I have to be honest with you all in this video, my fingers are ripped to shreds because I've been playing so much leading up to NAM, which is next, it's in like two weeks, 
Uh, and I've been recording loads, and my, my fingers are just torn apart. You won't be able to see very well. I don't know if you can see on the close-up. Close-up? No, you can't. Basically, they really hurt. So I'm trying to do these big bends, and it's just painful. Um, but you get the idea. We've gone through all the channels um, through the Oxbox, and you can quite clearly hear how using a Strat, um, going for something with humbuckers, with piezos, you've got all these different tones, chimey cleans, thick crunches, hard rock, classic rock, metal, shred. Um, so now what I want to do is jump over to the torpedo with the baritone to show you some really awesome heavy sounds. Um, I'll mimic the settings that are on there, on here so you can see them on the close-up cam so that we, we you know where we're at. Um, but I'm going to switch guitars. Okay, so I've got my baritone. We're going into the Torpedo Studio now. I've got uh, the VX100 hooked up. It's exactly the same amp, same tubes, everything. I'm yet to change one set of tubes for EL34s. These are both 6L6. And I've mimicked the controls on the front. So right now what you're hearing is gain one at halfway. Uh, bass is just rolled off a little bit, and middle and treble. And this is how it sounds. So, as you can hear, it's dynamic. Uh, gains at halfway, we could clean that up a bit more if we wanted to, but I figured what I'd do next is throw in the preamp focus with gain at halfway so you can hear how it transforms a high output humbucker on this channel into something quite disgusting. Here we go, preamp focus is in. It's just, there's so much girth to it. Now, if you put this through a cabinet, it's just unreal. Um, again, because I'm, I'm in a home studio with uh, cab sims, uh, load boxes, it sounds thick and powerful to me in the room, but just you have to try it with a cab. 
Um, so next, I'm going to move across to gain two without preamp focus so you can hear how it sounds as is and then we'll throw in the preamp focus and that is where all you guys that like your ridiculously genty tones are going to be really happy. Okay, so now we're on to gain two. As you can see on the close-up, the controls are mimicked, so we're still a little bit less bass. Actually, no, I pushed it up a tiny bit. Um, everything's more or less halfway, gain's at halfway, and there's no preamp focus. This is how it sounds. <laughs> Oh, it's so grunty. There's a serious just thickness to it. Um, and as you can quite clearly hear, and we demonstrated, it can be shreddy thing, it can be you know, high gain lead thing, it can be soaring leads, or it can be just ridiculous filth. Right, so next I'm gonna throw on the preamp focus and it, this is where it gets really disgusting. Right, preamp focus in, everything's the same, here we go. So, there it is. I'm, I'm so, I, I can't believe I, it sounds that good. Like, I'm so happy that we've got to this point now. Because that's the kind of thing that throws this amp into that realm where you guys that love your progressive metal and technical metal stuff are just disgusting, filthy tones for heavy music. You've got it and you don't need any pedals. You don't need anything, you just need the amp. I'm blown away. I am, I'm, I'm genuinely just, I know I helped design this with Martin and I've been there through every step, but when you get, you know, I've heard it in like the R&D process, when you're just testing and trying things and testing and changing guitars and obviously you're there and you're approving and stuff, but when you get it home and you get it to really get involved with and get in depth with it, that's when you really, it starts to open itself up to what it can really do because you have time to mess with it. And I'm genuinely so chuffed that it sounds this good. I'm so relieved. And I'm so happy and I just think anybody that gets one you're not going to be disappointed you're really not I honestly think it's one of the best modern high gain amplifiers out there right now I genuinely I'm saying it it's MIDI programmable so you can program your patches as you need it's got a, a beautiful clean channel it can do dirty blues and funky stuff like I showed you with the Strat um, try it with a cab if you don't believe me just try it just try one at a shop it's unreal and then you can get through to thick high gain, soaring leads, fat crunches with strats. Just, it does everything. 
and it's a modern high gain amp. It's aimed at guys that like modern high gain metal, hard rock and stuff, all that leady shred stuff. But plug a Strat in. Mick Taylor plugged a Strat in, had a go, and he was gobsmacked at how good it sounded with a Strat. And you know what Mick's like. He's all about the vintage gear and the really beautiful like matches cleans and stuff. And he tried it with this, and he was just like, I'm, on, I'm in awe at how good it sounds. So it's my favorite Victory amp. I hope it's yours. You need to try it. I'll put links in the description box below. A huge thank you to Victory for involving me in creating this beast. A huge thank you to Martin for creating this beast. And a huge thank you to everyone that's already got one. I really hope you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, there you go. I've been Rabir, and I'll see you all very soon.